Our scripture for this morning is from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we're continuing our series on the Apostles' Creed, and we're focusing on this affirmation, I believe in the communion of saints. And it seems appropriate that we focus on the communion of saints today, as this weekend we observe Memorial Day. Memorial Day, we we remember those who have served this nation, and especially those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. And we also remember our dear ones who have gone before us. They have completed the race that we are now on, the race of following Jesus in this world. We know that this race is not a short jog in the park. It's a marathon run in often difficult conditions. There is some amazing scenery along the way. We can find no greater love, no more complete joy, no deeper peace than we find in running with Jesus. But there are long, painful stretches too, with many trials and temptations. This early Christian writing, known as the letter to the Hebrews, was really a sermon delivered to a church in a time of crisis. The pastor who preached this sermon remembers a time earlier in the book when things were better in the church, when they were cheerful and generous and caring for one another. But now members of this congregation are being ostracized by their neighbors. Some are being imprisoned and even martyred. Many have dropped out and fallen away. They had started well, but this preacher is not sure that they will finish. Now, maybe you can relate to those who first heard this sermon. You may not be facing the same hardship that they did, but you've got some obstacles of your own. A few years ago, the beloved wife of a faithful pastor died. And just a few days after her death, he preached a sermon entitled, Sunday After Elizabeth's Death. He knew and loved the congregation that had invited him to preach. And so even in his grief, he gave this sermon. And in it, he wrestled with some questions. Questions he'd been wrestling with in the days following her death. Is there a school where people can study how to live by themselves after 54 years of marriage? Can someone tell me what those pills were Elizabeth used to hand me every morning? How do I cope with reaching out and finding she's no longer there? Some of you may be wrestling with some questions like this. You may be wrestling with some heartache. You may be facing some trials in your life and you're wondering if you can stay in the race you are on. Well, here in Hebrews 12, we are given four sound pieces of advice for finishing well the race that we're in. And the first is this. Remember who is around us. Remember who is around us. Look at the first part of verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the word therefore serves as a hinge. 
It calls us to look back at where we've been, and it calls us to look ahead at where we're going. Looking back in Hebrews, we come to Hebrews 11, known as the faith chapter of the Bible. And we hear this great roll call of heroes and heroines of the faith. These greats are among that great company of those who are part of the communion of saints. Often when we think of saints, we think of those who have been canonized by the church after death. But in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul refers to all Christians as saints. Saints are ordinary people who have yielded their lives to God. Ordinary people like you and me, through whom God works in extraordinary ways. After hearing the names of some standouts among the communion of saints, we look ahead and the focus is on those of us running the race now. And the setting in which we run, you'll notice, is not an auditorium, it's an arena. As we run the race, we are surrounded by this great, invisible, very real sea of faces. It's important to emphasize, too, that those who surround us are witnesses, not just spectators. There is a profound difference between a witness and a spectator. A spectator sits on the sidelines and watches you go through something. A witness is someone who has been down on the field where you are. They have run the race you are in. They have met the challenges of living the disciplined life. They have made the sacrifices required of those whose first love is Jesus. This preacher declares that we can finish the race, we can hold on if we remember who is around us cheering us on. Now this phrase, communion of saints, involves the word communion, which is one of the most beautiful images in the Bible. The idea is that those who are becoming saints here on earth and the saints who have gone before us in heaven still commune together. You know, from the time our daughters were born, I have been praying for them. And now, every day I pray not only for them, but for their husbands and for their children. And I can't imagine that I would stop praying for them in heaven. I don't believe our loved ones who have died spend all their time watching over us from heaven. I don't really want them watching over me all the time, seeing me at my worst. Nor, as much as I love them, do I want to spend all my time in heaven watching my children and grandchildren. But I do think that our loved ones who have died continue to love and care for us and await the day when we will be reunited with them. And I think that they pray for us too. I think that they are there among the communion of saints cheering us on as we run the race that we're in. What faces do you see as you think about the communion of saints that surround us? Hebrews reminds us that we can finish well the race we're in if we remember who is around us. We must not only remember who is around us, we must also remove what is on us. Look at the second part of verse 1. Let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Runners do not compete wearing winter coats or carrying heavy weights on their backs and in their shoes. 
they wear clothing made of special lightweight material and shoes that weigh only ounces. One might also render this part of verse 1 as, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that entangles us. That word entangles more clearly depicts what happens to us when we harbor attitudes and engage in behaviors that wrap around our feet and make it difficult for us to maintain our stride. Now, I don't know what baggage you may be carrying around with you these days. Perhaps you've harbored some attitudes or engaged in some behaviors that are weighing you down or entangling you. My prayer is that on this Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit will move in your life and that you will be able to lay aside whatever you need to lay aside so that you can regain your stride as a disciple of Jesus. As we move on, the the preacher of Hebrews adds a third word of instruction for us. We are called to rely on what is in us. Rely on what is in us. Look at the third part of verse 1. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Some other translations render the word perseverance as patient endurance. Some people endure things, but they grumble and complain every step of the way. That is not patient endurance. Patient endurance is following God's call even when you face adversity. Patient endurance is being fervent in prayer even when there seems to be no answer. Patient endurance is loving people even when they disappoint you. It's serving and giving faithfully even when it means sacrifice. A pastor friend told me about a conversation she heard between a daughter and her elderly mother while visiting with them. The mother in her early 90s is still active in her church. She still visits the sick She still helps helps prepare communion. She still serves as a tutor for children in the local elementary school. And in this conversation, her daughter said, Mother, don't you think at your age you could back off from these activities and enjoy a lighter schedule? You've earned it after all these years, and I'm afraid you're tiring yourself out. Her mother, who is about five feet tall, stood up and said this. When I decided to follow Jesus, I did not promise to follow him part of the way. I promised to serve him all the way. And that is what I intend to do. Obviously, this 92-year-old saint had spent a lifetime following Jesus, and her spiritual well ran deep. Her witness reminds me of something that John Wesley, the father of the Methodist movement, once said, Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, for as long as ever you can. To serve for as long as ever we can, we need to draw regularly from the streams of living water that God has so richly provided for us. Remember who is around you. Remove what is on you. Rely on what is in you. After checking off the items in verse 1, the preacher has one final word of advice. 
And an entire verse is devoted to this one. It's the most important thing needed to finish well the race set before us. Realize who is before us. I appreciate how Eugene Peterson translated the first part of Hebrews 12 too. Looking to Jesus, who both began and finished the race we are in. Jesus has gone before us, he says. In spite of the horrific pain of the cross, Jesus kept his eye on the prize. Having won the race, he says, Jesus now stands at the finish line cheering for us. Good track coaches will teach their athletes not to look to the right or to the left and by all means certainly not to look behind during the race. To keep your momentum and your stride, they will say, fix your eyes on the finish line. One Saturday afternoon, I was drawn into a documentary on ESPN, the sports network, called Catching Kayla. It was the story of an athletic 14-year-old that played on her school's elite soccer team. In the early fall of her freshman year of high school, during soccer practice, Kayla began to feel weakness in her legs. Tests were run, a diagnosis was given, multiple sclerosis. Kayla had to give up soccer. Instead, she turned to running and a coach that believed she could do it. Her experience of running defies any label. Because of her MS, Kayla loses all feeling in her legs when she runs. She knows her legs are moving, but she can't tell where or how fast. She can't feel pain, but she also had to learn to pace herself. After a difficult start, Kayla made amazing progress. First, she made the girls' varsity track team. Then she became the fastest member of the team. Then she started training with the boys' team. Then became one of the fastest girls in all of North Carolina. And the whole time, one voice pushed her. The voice of her coach. Because she loses feeling in her legs, she's unable to come to a coordinated stop. Her coach is always there at the finish line to catch her. Kayla had an amazing senior year of high school, and the final race that year was the 3200 at the State Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Let's watch what happened. Hi, champ. You give me all you got for four years. What happened? I fell. In the first lap, about um, a little over 100 meters in. There you go. Good job, Kayla. I guess I got squished. And then I fell backwards, and I did like a little flip. What about? Oh, what come you? on! Well, wait, I she fell. I'm a felina. Get back in it. I kind of chuckled to myself, like, this would happen, like, how ironic. It was, it was also a little hard. If you don't expect it, then you're on the ground. You have to get back up, but everybody else is farther ahead. It's, it's hard. So, hey, you got to get up. I was able to catch back up with the group. Gradually worked your way up, sat with the leaders, brushed it off, nothing ever happened. I sat on a couple girls for about three laps, and uh, I wanted to, I guess, pick up the pace. Drop the hammer! You gotta go now, Kayla! That is Montgomery going to the lead. As you come around the final turn, what's going through you? Um, 
Well, Bianca Bishop was in second place, and she's got a really great kick, and I knew it. Come on, hold her off! I, I knew she was gonna catch me if I didn't go then, so I just I gave it my all, and I sprinted fast as I've ever sprinted in my whole life. Come on, come on! That is Kayla Montgomery of Mount Tabor. She will be your girl's 3,200 meter run champion. Wow. Yeah! We'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> I got you. No. <laughs> oh, ball. I crossed the line and I was so happy. Help me. Help me. Please. Please. Help me. I couldn't have asked for a better finish or a better end of my uh, senior year. In the final race of her high school career, Kayla Montgomery finished the way she had so many times before into her coach's arms, and in first place. From Mount Tabor, Kayla Montgomery. To beat it, to outrun it, to know you got every movement out of those legs while you still can, that's why she's running. Friends now. Okay. So I just hope to run as long as I can and to make the most out of it as long as I can. When or if I'm not able to run at some point down the road, then at least I can look back and know that when I could, I gave it my all. This Memorial Day, we remember those who have finished the race. Triumphantly, they have crossed over and fallen into the arms of Jesus. And we celebrate their witness. At the same time, we also claim our own witness. Remembering the words of Hebrews, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the sin that entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, who has begun and finished the race we are in. Let us remember who is around us. Let us remove what is on us. Let us rely on what is within us. And above all, let us realize that the Lord Jesus goes before us. You can and will finish the race if you fix your eyes on Jesus. Let us pray. God, we thank you as we observe Memorial Day for the witness of those who have gone before us. We believe in the communion of saints. And even now we picture that sea of faces. Lord, of those who have run the race we are in, and now cheer us on from heaven. Lord, we thank you that we are not alone in running this race that we are on, this race of following Jesus. And we thank you that you have given us the communion of saints here on earth as well. Our sisters and brothers in Christ whose love and support and encouragement help us to continue the race today. Lord, give us grace that by the power of your Holy Spirit we might let go of all that would trip us up or weigh us down. And that we would continue to draw deep from that spiritual well that you have provided for us in Jesus. And Lord, we pray that in a world of many obstacles and distractions, you would help us from day to day to fix our eyes on Jesus who goes with us in the race and who is also 
waiting for us at the finish line. Oh God, we're, we're so grateful for the gift of this Pentecost Sunday and the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we pray for the blessing of your Holy Spirit now upon each of us and upon all who join us in the work of ministry. Let your kingdom come on earth, we pray, as it is in heaven. And now we join together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.